Hey everybody, David and David here from payitforward.com and upphone.com and in this video we're going to talk about iOS 14, some of the new features and our first thoughts. A lot of great new features here. I'm excited about it because it's actually changing the way that I use my iPhone, which really hasn't happened in the last few versions of iOS that have come out. Mm -hmm. We downloaded the developer beta yesterday because it came out yesterday and I really like the ability to show off to my friends. I remember back in iOS 6, it was so different mm -hmm. that I could show my friends. Anyway, friends are excited, we're excited, you're gonna be excited, Yeah, everybody's excited. Yeah, so let's start with probably the biggest change and that's the home screen. Looks pretty similar, however, if you swipe left to right, you'll see that the widget section got a total makeover here. Mm -hmm. So you can get a lot more information. You can also customize this a lot more. So if I press and hold on a widget, I can tap edit home screen. You got this nice little plus button in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And here are a whole bunch of widgets you can add. I love the notes widget. You can stick that and just have access to one or more of your notes. Yeah. I love the weather widget. And I also love how they built in different views for all these different widgets. Yeah. So weather, so weather yep. you can get a, a wider one yep. or just a mega square. Now you're probably thinking, okay, it's widgets, but Hold your breath, because yes. we're going to blow your mind right So now. let's add this big square widget right now. Okay. I've got two others here. It's going to take a second to load. You can now drag these widgets onto the home screen. That's that's the big thing. That is awesome. So if I start dragging this over, look at that. Boom. How about that? Now it just moves your apps over a screen. Yeah, you're going to have a lot, a lot of fun with this. Yeah. So on my phone, I have the little tiny version of the weather widget with all of my other apps. But I used to have this Fahrenheit app, and I guess I still do. It's not exactly working. It says 50 degrees out. <laughs> but this Fahrenheit app, I liked to be able to see the weather on the home screen of my iPhone. But now you could just do it with widgets. So whereas widgets used to be kind of this afterthought that lived off to the left side where nobody ever visited except for some people, of course. Now they are like mini app previews. Mm -hmm. So this is the weather app if I tap on this. Goes to the full version of the weather app. If you tap on the notes widget, it goes to the full version of the notes app. They're no longer disconnected separate things. One leads to the other. So. Yep. Next thing I want to talk about here with the widgets is smart stacks. So if I start editing my home screen again, press and hold, tap edit home screen. You have a couple options here. You can either go, tap the plus button and add a smart stack and that will add six or seven widgets that you can pick and choose from. Or if you've already got two that you like, simply just drag it. There you go. Swipe up and down weather, calendar, pretty neat. So it's gonna take up less space. Yep. Let's go to a home screen. Let's just pick one. Let's go to a different one without a widget on it. And then you can also add widgets here by tapping the plus button in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Let's add a smart stack here. So you can pick a small one or a wider one. Let's add the wider one. Beautiful. And here I can just start scrolling. You got a whole bunch of stuff. Really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. It's really like amazing. Message, yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah. So we've talked about widgets setting the home screen. One other thing on the home screen is the new app organizer, mm -hmm. app library, mm -hmm. as it's technically called. Uh -huh. And if you, you're like me, you've organized your apps into folders before, it takes forever. Uh -huh. And then you kind of give up in a whole bunch of apps. You install a new one and they just start taking up space. Yeah. Now Apple is already organizing them for you. Yeah, so they were kind of doing this before. It would suggest a folder name. But this is really helpful. I love the search and also the ability to just scroll through it alphabetically. So I can look at all of my apps alphabetically in a row if I want to get to one real quick. Even if I'm wondering if I have an app on my iPhone, it's just a lot easier to find it now. Yep. Calendar. Calendar. Easy. Tap Perfect. It. Open it. There it is. Yeah. So let's head back to that app library. Another great piece of this with the app library is just that you don't have to have every single app on a home screen now. It can still be on your iPhone in the app library, mm -hmm. but you could really sort of get rid of the clutter on the home screens, especially for apps that maybe you don't use a lot. So let's show them the difference between deleting apps and just sending them to the app library. Yep, so if I wanna start deleting an app at a home screen, yep. tap the minus button. Now you've got the delete option or the add to library option. Mm -hmm. If you tap add to library, it'll disappear from your home screen, but it's still on your iPhone and delete obviously deletes it. Yep, so just to show both you. both places. I can still access Cordify right there. Perfect. All right, I think we've covered apps and widgets pretty, pretty comprehensively. Pretty thoroughly, yeah. yes. So next let's talk about the Messages app. This is another big change. You now have the option to pin messages to the top of your Messages app. And if you have someone you talk to more often, other people, easy to access that yes. conversation. Yes, a few different ways to do it too. So 
on my iPhone. Open up the Messages app. Let's say I wanted to pin David Lynch to the top of my Messages app all the time because he's important to me. So there's a few different ways to do it. One of the easiest ways is just simply to uh, press down, force touch, and you can tap pin David. You can also just force touch, move your finger around and then drag it up to the top where mm -hmm. it says drag here to pin. And David, what is the third way? Swipe left to right. Left to right. And there you go. Boom, pin. You can see the whole thing. Just like the mail app. Yep. Except like you're, like you're flagging it is important in the mail app. Same deal. And then if you want to unpin a person, unpin, they go back to where they were. The next thing we want to talk about is a new native iOS app called Translate. This is particularly useful. Maybe you're traveling to a different country. You don't yeah. speak the language. You need help finding something. Absolutely. So I'm going to go open the Translate app and you can use Siri to ask a question. So where is the bathroom? Don't ask a banyo. A lot of languages to choose from in a whole bunch. You can also download these offline. Maybe you don't have service. You're traveling internationally. You don't have a nice international plan. Right. You uh, need to download these offline. You could do that. I would totally do that before, before you get driving. there. But imagine you're in the airplane and they say no cellular at all. Well, you can still do the translations. Yep. The last feature we want to talk about is picture in picture. We think this was really made for us because yeah. now you can open a, a one of our videos in Safari, open the settings app at the same time and follow right along. It's really Right, no perfect. more switching back and forth. People watch our videos. How do I fix this? Settings app, back and forth between YouTube. No more. Nope. As David said, for us. Yep. So there, yeah, it's only available in a few apps right now. That's yep. Apple TV, Podcast, Safari, FaceTime, iTunes, and Home. Maybe when iOS 14 is actually released to the full public, we'll have more compatible apps. But for now, that's it. Yep. So let's show them how to do it. This is one of our videos. Normally, you'd have to switch back and forth between the settings app and the video, but I can just make this full screen. And then I can swipe up and look what happens. The there video is. is actually right on the screen. So I can open the settings app and actually follow along with exactly what we're doing. And if I needed to zoom in, I could just use that same button there. Pretty amazing. You can just use your phone with picture in picture, skip back and forth, stop, start, all the normal stuff. I love it. Yep, those are our favorite features of iOS 14. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about iOS 14 and if you also got the uh, developer beta. The full version is going to be released sometime in September, so look out for that. Uh, thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more iOS 14 updates. And once again, thanks for watching.